Mesopotamia is considered the cradle of the first great civilizations. Among them are the Sumerians, who created well-organized kingdoms at the beginning of the Bronze Age. Obviously, at that time, human beings did not only live in Mesopotamia. They were in much of the globe, and most lived as nomads or in small villages. Some tribes migrated to North Africa in about 5500 BC, where they created villages and spread out along the Nile Valley, more precisely in the regions now known as Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. The region was chosen for the existence of the famous Nile River. Besides being the most extensive river in the world, it was also responsible for the development of Egyptian culture. The ancient Egyptians called the Nile River Iteru, meaning Great River. They considered it a gift from the gods to all living beings. Every year, the Nile River has periods of high tide, irrigating the soil around it. The debris makes the land dark and fertile, and makes it possible to farm and graze rural animals. One of the names that the Egyptians used to refer to their land was Kemet, a term that can be translated as Black Earth, underlining the importance of fertility in the soil. The most prominent region is the delta of the Nile, where the river is divided into several branches, flowing into the Mediterranean Sea, where the largest number of settlements are. As with the Mesopotamian peoples, the dominance of agriculture was the main stimulus to boost trade and cultural development of the early Egyptians. As time went by, settlements became independent cities. Soon, the first rulers began to emerge, who declared themselves sovereign kings of their territories. In 3100 BC, a king of Upper Egypt began a military campaign against the other cities. The identity of this king is discussed among historians. Archaeological records indicate the existence of a semi-legendary king who, according to the beliefs at the time, would be a descendant of Horus. This mysterious king was probably known by the name of Narmer or Menes. There are strong indications that Narmer would be the name used. More complete studies indicate that Menes was an honorary title, which means he who perseveres. Narmer was successful in his campaign and unified the people of Lower and Upper Egypt under his command. He was the first pharaoh of Egypt. Narmer began the first Egyptian dynasties. This was followed by 30 dynasties over the centuries. The city of Memphis was founded by Narmer. For a long time, it was the capital of ancient Egypt due to its geographical location, which guaranteed a strategic control point in Egyptian territory. The city had a port on the banks of the Nile River, where factories and workshops are built, producing ceramic jars, clothes, or dyes that were transported to the neighboring cities by boats along the river. Even in this period of their history, the Egyptians already had conflicts with the neighboring peoples. For example, some Nubian and Lebanese tribes who did not accept the dominant power of the Egyptians in most fertile territories. These tribes constantly rebelled against the Egyptians and attacked smaller villages and cities, provoking violent fighting and making it difficult to distribute goods throughout the region. It is possible that Pharaoh Narmer married Nithotep, a princess from North Africa. The marriage would have political objectives to appease disputes on Egyptian territory. Nithotep was the first queen of Egypt, Perhaps she was the first female pharaoh after Narmer's death. If so, she was the first woman in history to rule a dynasty. Nathotep's name was found in several places, such as tombstones and sacred objects. This underlines its importance as co-founder of the first dynasty. She is the oldest queen of ancient Egypt, whose name is known by historians. During the great history of ancient Egypt, the pharaohs played a more important role than traditional figure attributed to kings and emperors. The Egyptians considered us sacred beings to the Egyptians. According to the beliefs of the time, the pharaohs had inherited divine blood. They were descendants of Horus, and for that reason, only those who belonged to that same lineage were entitled to the throne. This explains why some women have taken over throughout Egyptian history. In contemporary peoples, only men had the right to rule, but the Egyptians always chose a woman with divine blood over a man without that trait. The pharaohs were not only in charge of governing, they were also the supreme commanders of the army, the highest magistrates, and the highest priests. The pharaoh was the human figure closest to the gods. Despite all the benefits available to the pharaohs, their lives were not particularly easy. Some took on the burden of governance of a nation before the age of 12. 
the heir to the royal throne was prepared from childhood to fill the position. He had to learn military tactics, the history of kingdoms, and military conquests. He also had to learn to read, write, and memorize religious rites. Despite the authority of the pharaohs, they rarely remained in power for long. Their reign was often interrupted by invaders or coups. To prolong the reign of the pharaohs, every year ritualistic festivals took place, the Opit festivals. The objective was to rejuvenate the pharaoh and his bond with the gods. When a pharaoh was able to remain in power for about 30 years, a great party was organized to exalt his reign. At death, he was honored with parties, songs, and rituals of passage to the other world. Around 2686 BC, the phase known as the Ancient Empire, also known as the Pyramid Age, began. In this period, Egypt was already established as an empire, having commercial relations with the Lebanese, Palestinian, and Mesopotamian peoples. Egypt had become a land of great riches. During the Ancient Empire, there were great artistic and architectural breakthroughs. The paintings that adorned the temples and palaces were made with great skill, whose proportions were calculated with high precision. The dye came from the extract of plants and minerals. Insects and animal blood were even used to achieve more vivid colors. As a result, many paintings maintain their colors and splendor today. The paintings could represent from everyday life to great events, such as bountiful harvests, the crowning of pharaohs, or natural disasters. The gods and sacred rituals were prominent in the artistic representations. Many of the most famous stories of the Egyptian pantheon were told through paintings and carvings of palace walls and tombs. In the economy, all production was accounted for and recorded, which enabled a more accurate allocation of resources. Government officials collected taxes, recruited peasants to work on crops or in construction, and headed the legal system, commanding patrols of soldiers and prosecuting crimes. During the ancient empire, the military area also progressed. The soldiers already had breastplates made of wool or leather, shields made of wood and covered with leather, and the iconic Kopesh sword, also of this period. Around 2200 BC, there was a great period of drought in Egypt, which lasted 140 years. It caused hunger in the population and a decline in economic and social power. Instability ravaged Egypt, and the pharaoh's government lost control of his territories. Some provinces, further away from the capital, revolted and declared independence. The leaders of the rebel provinces stopped paying taxes to the central government and began to enrich their own coffers. In the end, a kind of mafia leader was born, as they hired criminals and deserters as personal protectors. Two groups stood out. One commanded Lower Egypt, from the city of Heracompolis, and the other commanded Upper Egypt, from the city of Thebes. Around 2055 BC, the forces of Thebes commanded by Mentuhotep II defeated the rulers of Heracompolis, unifying Egypt again and beginning the period of the Middle Empire. Even with so many remarkable events, the history of ancient Egypt was just beginning. Many important discoveries will be revealed in the next episodes.